when I come back home. I know say it don't take small why I drop video and that are because I don't they do paid mentorship programs with some of them. So if you are they interested in the mentorship program, we are going to teach you now one on one. Then just follow the link for the description and then we go take them from there. So but meanwhile, for today's video, I will show you how to build this profile web page with Bootstrap and JavaScript. I hope say so you now go enjoy this kind of video because this profile website it makes sense where we we get many things where we feel learned for this portfolio website. This is a even get secure form where we say it get in own recapture. And then I can't drop one nice animation. What do you say if we add any animation? So I go teach you now. And I feel they put correct SVG animation on top your web pages. So if you check them, you go say in a fully responsive website. If you check them for mobile phone, it's still fresh. If you check them for tablet, it's still fresh. Check the menu. You click them. You go say the menu don't they collapse now. If you say make we expand them again, like I close this one. If you say you want to download the resume, if you even download your resume for here, this is not just a PDF. We say anybody if you click them and download your own resume. Make we test the form. Make I show that as the form they even take work. So I could just put my name for here. So then I go put my email for here. Then I go put my phone number for here. And then make I just drop one small note for here. We'll say we go take test, say everything done they work correct, correct for us. And because in a secure form, you go need to click this I am not a robot. So once you don't validate finish, you can click this send message. It will come redirect you come this thank you page. And if you click even this link for here, we'll say go carry you go back into the website and by the way this site i go show now how we feel deploy them online so that we feel they work with this site so we say make we check the back end now our form name be this now the time where the form just show be this so make we open them you go see say now the message where the form they give us for here so anybody if you send you message online are you going to see this message for this back end for here so if you now enjoy all this kind of video, no one no forget to just take one seconds, one seconds, pause the video, just like and um, subscribe. If you never subscribe already, make you start to the code for here soon. So make we build the skills section for here so. I will just drop one small comment for here. So we're gonna say now the skill section. Now we go to build for here. Now for inside here, we could just start with a simple section uh, tag for here and make we just give them a class of container. Now inside this container class here, we go drop a div. And inside this div, we go leave the class empty for now. Then make we create a h1 and just put a title text, say my skill. So just like before, we go do a span, go put the scale inside the span, and inside the span, we go give them a class of text warning. And now, if we give that H1 a class of my one, and then just set the text to uppercase for here. Next thing for inside the main div, we go set the text center so that all the text for here go do the center. Make you give them a width of 75, and then we go just set the MX to auto, then for the uh, margin left and margin right to auto and then we go give them a margin bottom of four make we preview them and you can see say it makes sense for here so so we could go back vs code and now we want a paragraph so make we give this paragraph a class of fs-5 and then we go give them another class of mt3 and we could give another class of mb5 that just means say we want to make the font size set to 5, make the margin top set to 3, and then make the margin bottom set to 5. So make I just copy some text from the repo and I go paste them for here. You wanna feel right any text one at once. So this is not just some dummy text with it here. We quick collapse them. And now what you want to say, we just want our first row, so I'll go say class of row, and this row won't give them a child. And now this child we will call them a column dash md dash four, 
and inside this column we go put our first skill inside here so i could just put one comment here for skill one and inside this skill one or under this skill one we go come first write a div this div we want an empty class for now but inside here we want a p or paragraph and we could just put a class and we could set the class to fw dash bold then our font weight bold and then we could set the font size again to 5 after that make I just add one uh, skill for here which now wordpress so we'll just put that like this like this now if you just give them a class for this div of skill still inside the skill class we could just say we want another div we get class of progress and the child of this div with class of progress could be progress dash bar so bootstrap then already give us this one make we preview arm and the same say we get our progress bar now make we go back vs code make we add another uh more classes for here so so inside this progress bar we go add more classes of progress dash bar dash stripes so we want to make it be like stripes so we could just say we want an inline style for here and we go give them a height of 40 pixels for inside our progress bar make we give them a bg warning i'm going to set the edges to rounded dash three make we say text dark emphasis that will make the text show where we're on top of this yellow background we could come say we want to make the font with the bold i'm going to set the font size to six for here after that make we give the text we want me the text go the end so we we'll say text end for here so once we'll set the padding end to four then a pe four and make we add another inline style for here to just set the width for here for now this is not temporary things we we'll just set the width for here to 50 percent so that we go figure them and make we drop a text of 50 percent so we will see that 50 percent text for here so every time you're going to take that width of the color where we want. So we could go back VS Code, make we set the rounded for our progress, uh, set them to three. And what I want to be saying, make we come these styles for now. Make we go into our main CSS. I'm going to just style all the progress bar for here. I'm going to just write our skill class. And we also want the progress with the inside our skill class. We feel give them all a height of 40 pixels. So if we preview them, you can see say it see they work the same. But just that we're not going to do this all the time for all the other elements. They're going to inherit them. So make I just add comments for here. So we're going to say, oh, now our progress bar styles now we they use for here. So right. So make we go back into the index.html file. And for inside here, what we're going to start to do now. Now say we want the way where we're going to use JavaScript to they increase the width right so what i would like to say we go first from this column and we go just say skill two we go duplicate them so we'll get a four column grid make we give them a text of html so we'll just say html css and javascript and now make we increase the width of this one or rather make we reduce the width to 32 and we're going to reduce the text also to the same thing where we get for here which now 32 make we preview them because you say now the width of 32 day different but if you look at them because it's a 12 day for this side now we won't push the two everything come the center so how we go do them make we go back to s code make we scroll up to the main div where they hold everything together but we'll go the first one all right so we'll go the first div we we'll get column 4 md4 i'm going to give them an offset of md-2 that's going to push the first one come the center and then the other one will follow um all these ones now bootstrap the airports they do all these ones for here so we want duplicate this row so i will just collapse them highlight them and press ctrl d to duplicate the row now we could just call on row two and just like the same but we just they change the values for here so i will change them to skill three for here and change this one to skill four now we could just change the text to react now, if you put any language you want to get, if not PHP or all those things, if you put that one for here, so don't worry. So, if you don't like this, make we change the weight also 
So I'm going to just make small changes, make a fast forward video so that we no go to waste time for here so. Now so everything don't set for here now. If we say make a preview arm, you can see say we get our static values for here. Many say everything just they uh, you know they move, it just they with the look up, nothing they happen. Now what you want to do with JavaScript is say one time we we'll say when we scroll into the skill section, then at that time we we'll say all oh, this yellow yellow line go they grow inside. They go they grow one by one, each of them as we they scroll into view. Now that time we want to increase them, they go. Now what do we want to do with JavaScript for here? So make we go back VS Code and make sure say we get our main JS. And because we don't set them to module, that's why we feel they do like this. So, so for inside our JS folder, make we create a new file, make we call them skill.js. And inside here, where we're going to write all our skill or all our JavaScript for the skills. So make we use some comment to first know the kind of code where we're going to write. We they call this kind of thing pseudocoding or pseudocode. So the first thing we want now say we want a function, and this function it go to check all the elements where they inside the view. We want another function, and this function it go to help us to update the progress bar. And then we we'll go create another function where we we'll go to use the update all our progress bar elements when we add them. So make we first write the first one. We we'll go just call them is in view. And this function, we we'll go use the fat arrow function. It go to take in an element. And inside this function, make we first create a rectangle variable. I'm going to just assign them to whatever element we'll be passing to them to the get boundary client rect. Waiting this one they do be say it they help us to collect the size, the boundary size of the whole screen. So any screen size, it will detect them. Now when we get our rect variable, make we contact say we want to use them to get the rect dot top. So we're going to detect the top. I we want to check if it they greater than or equals to zero. And we want to check if the rec dot bottom they less than or equals to windows dot inner height. So we go feed the detect the top from the bottom. So make we just return this value so that we go feed the get the value as a boolean or as true or false inside this is in view. So now make we build the next function. I'm gonna just create a constance and we'll just call this constance update element progress. Make we assign them to a fatal function and this fatal function will be taking an element as an argument. And now we go contact say inside this function make we create a progress width. I will go use let to assign them to one so that we go feel they change the value over time. So we could just uh, say make with the increase them on so so and so seconds based on x amount of seconds we want to increase them, all right, or milliseconds. Now we go use a set interval so that it go to change every time that interval reach. It they taking a callback function and inside this callback function, what you want to be say one check if the progress with the greater than or equals to the element we will go pass in dot data set dot skill now we never create this attribute yet but when we create them now that time we'll be say we go come the pass them into our code so make me just set the clear interval so that every time our interval will declare but first we're gonna need to create an id make we just assign this interval just give them an ID so that it go to collect the ID and then we go to pass them in. So this go to recursively they clean all our uh, interval what we get for here. So, all right, under the if statement, make we add an else if statement for here. And now this go check, say, okay, well, as this condition don't pass, so make we even check, say, say, if the is in view, remember, say that one will give us a boolean. If the is in view, and then we will give that is in view the element. Now we go contact say if that thing don't they true. Now that time we won't come add a progress width dot plus plus. That just means say we they increase the progress width variable for up. 
by one. So we're going to increase them by one every time if that condition is true. So for under that one, make we create another constant. Make we just call them progress count. And we're going to assign them to a template string. And this template string, we're going to use them the form our percentage that are the progress width we could come say okay make this progress width will be set for up make it the write the progress width that's not the number percentage so we're going to use and they create a, a string we get the progress string plus percentage on top of all right now we could come talk say we want the element dot style dot width we they use javascript the taku css for here and we just they assign this element dot style dot width to the progress count where we just create. Make we also say we won't just set them for 10 seconds. We we'll go change that one very soon. Now make we just console log them so we go see say oh we feel they see the number every time. And so make we create this our final main function we're going to call update progress for here and this one will still be fat arrow function where they take in an element well we're going to call them elements it's because now list of elements and inside this list of elements we want they use a for each loop to the loop over ram because it will be an array of elements now this for each if they take it a callback function we go take each element that now the element from here and we're going to check if any of them get the element dot data set dot skill and then if they get them now that time one can call this our update element progress and we'll go pass that element into ram we go create the data set dot skill very soon and then make we export them by default okay and now as we done the export them make we go back into the index or html file and then this hard coded style where we get for here we go come they change all of them one by one with our data set attribute so we go say data dash skill and now we go fit they assign any value for here where our javascript could read them for us make we go into the main.js file because we don't export our update progress function we go the import them into our main.js so i could just drop some kind pseudo code for here also and the first variable we're going to make now the skill bars and we're going to assign the skill bars variable to document.query selector all make sure say now all and we go call select the data skill attribute to do that we go say inside quotes one bracket data dash skill this one will select anything where they our page we get attribute of data skill as we don't run them like this we will contact say we want select the window object of the browser and we'll go attach an event listener to ram but this event listener we won't make it be scroll event listener and anytime when we scroll now that time we want to call this our update progress function where we the import so and now we feel they pass in the skill bars inside them make we preview our um, make we see as they go so you can see say anytime where they scroll you could see them um, say it they log out the position or the amount of the scroll where they so make we go back into vs code and if we go inside our skills.js file, change this console log with element.textContent. That will give us the text content and then we could just pass the text so that the text and the style could be changed. And now, make we go back into our index.html file. We can start to replace all those hard coded styles with some JavaScript data skill attribute, right? So we'll start to do that. Make we make I just do a quick quick for here. We we'll just change them, change them, and now if we preview them again, we can scroll down because it says they increase only when we day inside the view. Now that time with the text and everything, don't they increase nice, nice for here? But I go like maybe they increase turn by turn, maybe they increase randomly, maybe everything will be the same increase. If you now want to do this one, now if you follow along, so we could go back into our skill.js inside our update element progress function and for inside here 
we will come create our random milliseconds. We will come talk, say we want maths dot random and we will call this random method for here times 20. So we will come attach maths dot round and then we will surround everything inside math dot random with them. Make we assign them to a variable. Make we just call them random seconds. And then instead of 10, we go replace them with the variable of random seconds so that everything will ha happen randomly. Make we preview them. You will see, say, they know they grow together. One day fast past the other, one day slow past the other. Now, so we won't make it be. Make we just go back inside our index.html file and then make we just add small padding for the top so that we could see what's in the happen. So we want a padding PY4 and py for medium screen we will set them to five for the next video we will start to the work on the contact section and that will be the final part of this web page where we build so so i will see you now for the next video